Hello everybody and welcome to the YouTube channel of Skip Allen. This video is in response to a question on Facebook on Corel Painter Studio and the question is from Dan. Dan has a new Microsoft Surface Pro 3 and he was asking about how to make it uh, do multi-touch inside of Painter and also he was needing to figure out how to quickly increase his brush size and sample from the mixer panel. So let's see if I can show you a couple of things that may be helpful, Dan. Okay, the first thing is uh, making multi-touch work. What you want to do is come up to Edit, Preferences, and go to Tablet. And when you open up Tablet, you'll see Tablet Options. You have a Wacom compatible device, or you have an RTS compatible device, real-time stylus. Well, the Surface Pro can be a real-time stylus compatible device if you're using its little uh, stylus that came with it. So you'd want to click here, and then you want to enable multi-touch and click Windows Multi-Touch. Then you would click on OK, and after you click on OK, you must restart Cor Corel Painter for the uh, tablet options to change. Now, I'm actually on my regular computer and I'm working on a Cintiq, so I can't make these changes at the moment. I'm just going to cancel so I can continue working uh, on the Cintiq. Now, if I click up to Window, I want to bring you to a new thing in Corel Painter 2015, and it's called Arrange Palettes. And in Arrange Palettes, you have five new palettes or arrangements. You have new brushes, illustration, photo art, default, and simple. Currently we're showing the default arranged palette and I want to go to simple. That's the only one I'm going to talk about. And what the simple one does is it gives you an arranged palette that works for a small screen like a laptop or the Surface Pro 3. It gets rid of things like your navigator, your color panel, your uh, layers panel. It takes all those away and it gives you a command bar and a simplified uh, toolbox. Now, I don't like the command bar going out across the top. So the first thing I do is I drop mine down to the side and we're going to do that. We're going to go to Edit, Preferences, Interface, and I'm going to change the command bar layout to single column and say OK. And that will move it down to a single column. And I want to move this away from the edge a bit and come up. Nah up so you don't quite hit the red and I can't seem to do that. There we go. And then you can bring that one up next to it. So a little bit away from the side and up a little higher. I like it that way. Uh, you know, it depends on you. You could leave it the way it was. <laughs> I don't know really why I have to do that, but I do. It's compulsive, I guess. Um, okay, so we have these two uh, bars, the command bar and the toolbox, simplified toolbox. Their purpose is to allow us to do the major commands that we would do, the most common commands that we would do, without using a keyboard shortcut or without having to go up to the menu. So if I'm right-handed, I would have these two bars on the left-hand side because the Surface Pro 3 has touch capability, so I can come in and touch um, one of those items and my stylus would be in my right hand. If I'm left-handed, of course, I would reverse it. I would put these two over on the left-hand side and uh, have the stylus, put these two on the right-hand side and have the stylus in my left hand. All right, so you can see I've got my stylus over here and taking my finger, I'm going to touch the um, new button. Well, I thought I touched it. There we go. All right, so I'm going to touch the new button and open up the new image. Now with my stylus, I can select whatever I want to select and bring it in like that. Okay, so now I've got a new image uh, onto the surface. Okay, the next thing I need to do is I need to make a mark on it. So I'm going to come over to the uh, simplified toolbar or toolbox and click on the brush tool. And um, I'm going to now take my stylus 
and I'm just going to paint with whatever brush I have selected. Once I paint with it, then a couple of things become active in the command bar. We have a save icon. So if I click on or touch with my finger the save icon, I'm going to get the save, as, save image as dialog box. I also have this little arrow here, which is undo. So if I click on that or touch with my finger, it undoes the last thing that I had done. Or I can redo. Redo, undo. Redo, undo. Redo. Okay. Now, the next thing is cut. But to cut, I need to have uh, a rectangle. So I come here and make a rectangle around that. And I'm not going to cut first. I'm going to copy. So I click copy, and it's just copied that image. And now I can paste, and it pastes the images into a new layer. Now if I go back and select my selection tool again, and I come over here and I select this, and I click cut, now it cuts it, and if I select paste, it pastes it back on another uh, layer. So we have a copy, cut, and paste right there at our fingertips. But, you know, I'm not being able to see where it's going, what kind of layers I've got. And if you're like me, you kind of need to see your layers. Well, you do need to see them, but you don't have to see them all the time. That's the beauty of this. You can click here and your layers panel pops right up. Click again and it goes away. So I can click and it opens up. Now, if I make it larger, and I can, oops, didn't want to go to the red part. If I make it larger, now look, I can, it's going to stay that way. So I come over here and click, 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 click. Now, I'm going to do one other thing just to show you something that may be of help to you. I'm going to go to Window, I'm going to go to Color Panels, and I'm going to bring out my Color Mixer. Okay. Now, what came with it was the Navigator and the Channels, and I don't need Channels or the Navigator. So I'm just going to grab this Color Mixer here from the side. I picked on the gray area right there on the side. And so I have the color panel, the mixer panel, and the color set libraries. And then I'm going to take this and grab that little gray area, not up here, but this little gray area here, which will grab all three of those. And I'm going to bring it up until I see the blue line up on top of layers. Now I'm going to double click this so it is closed. But mixer is the one that I have selected. Then I'm going to close this. Now when I open and close my layers, I'm also opening and closing mixers. And I'm going to close this up a little bit because I don't need it that big. And now I still have everything on the screen. But if I turn this off and on, that's what I've got. Okay, so I'll tell you what, why I did that and what I'm going to do with it in a minute. All right, now what's the next thing? It's brush tracking. So I can just click here and quickly and easily change my brush tracking. Okay, cool. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but we don't have our property bar up here, our brush selector. None of that is up here. You know, that's all gone because we're trying to, to save uh, real estate or to, uh, you know, uh, use the real estate that we have very efficiently. So we've gone backwards a little bit with our uh, control, our toolbox here, our simplified toolbox. We have back in Painter 10, we had a brush category section and a brush variant section. So we have that here. If I click on the brush category, then I can come down the list and all the categories that are in the current library will be shown. And I can change the size of this list by sliding it in and out. More than likely, you'd want it to be kind of small or as small as it'll go so that you're saving real estate. And right now, I'm going to go to Cool Springs, 
category. And then I can click here and I have the brush variants that are in Cool Spring. So we'll just pick Fill 3 for funsies. And I have now picked the brush variant and the brush category that I wanted. And so if I start to paint, there you go. You see that I'm painting with my watercolor brush. All right. What else do I have? Well, I have a dropper tool because that easily allows me to come in and select color. I have the paint bucket tool and when I click on that, it brings the tool up and it will fill with whatever the current color is. I have an eraser tool, which if I click it, will come in and erase uh, the current layer. And right here, I have the layer adjuster tool, but I have other brushes with it on the little fly out menu. You have your square, your rectangular selection tool. You have your oval selection tool, your uh, lasso selection tool, your magic wand, and your layer adjuster tool, all on the same area. So if I want to make a rectangular selection, I would select that and come and make the rectangular selection. The neat thing is to write under it is clear selection. So if I just click on that, it gets rid of the selection for me. Again, no um, shortcuts are needed. Ah, now you wanted to make your brushes easy to make larger and smaller. Well, you want to be on your brush tool. And when you're on your brush tool, you can click here. And this is brush size on screen. It's a new function in Painter 2015. We click that and then you simply drag your brush and it changes the size of your brush quickly and easily. OK. Want to change it back, click again, it starts at zero, and you bring it up to the next size. But you not only can change the size on screen, you can also change the brush opacity. Click here, drag the brush there, and see how it gets more opaque and less opaque. Okay, so that's the uh, capability of the brush uh, opacity on screen. Now, I don't have my color wheel available to me. Okay, So what I want to do is I would just click here, which is a toggle for the temporal color palette. And that means I can just grab another color and then begin to paint with it, and I'm good to go. Or if I really want the color wheel, just click on that. It popped up and I've got it. Or if I needed to pick from the mixer pad, I've got it popping up right there and I can close it again as soon as I've got what I need. So I have two options there for uh, the palette. Now, I mean, for the color panel and for the mixer pad. I also have clone color and that's that little area that was in the uh, well, we'll show you. If I click on the layers again and I go to my color, this is the clone color uh, fill. And so if I click it here, notice that clone color changes. So I don't have to have this open to see clone color or to change it. Now, uh, this is the grabber tool, which allows me to move this around. This zooms in or zooms out. And this is your rotate page. And here you have full screen mode, where it just goes directly to full screen mode and back. OK. All right, so that went over these. And let's go back to this little thing that I did. I've done two things different to this arrangement. I've added the color mixer and color libraries to the layer on off switch. And I changed my uh, command bar to horizontal. So what I want to do now is I want to go to Window and Arrange Palettes, and I want to save the layout. And we'll call this um, Surface Pro 3 and say OK. 
All right, so that has now saved the layout. If I click on Arrange Palettes, we'll see Surface Pro 3. And I want to click on Surface Pro 3, which will bring it up as my arranged palette. Okay, now I'm with my Surface Pro 3. So I have my, everything is set up the way it should be. If I go back to my Arrange Palette, I think it's, go back to Simple, I think it's, will not hold the, the layer. Uh, yeah, see, my uh, my command is up here now. The layer, when I click on it, is just like that. But I want to be able to go to my range palettes for a Surface Pro 3, and my changes that I made are now available for me. Now, let's say that um, I have two different arrangements that I will use on my Surface Pro 3. I can also come to Arrange Palette and click on Quick Switch, and I would go to Layout 1 and pick whatever layout I want Layout 1 to be. And in this case, I've, I've selected, uh, whoops, sorry, I'll get this in a second. I've selected Skip's Watercolor as Layout 1, and I've selected Skip's Default as Layout 2. So now if I click on Quick Switch Toggle Layout, that brings up <clears throat> my uh, Skip's Watercolor Layout. Now this is not for the Surface Pro 3, but for my Cintiq. And what I've done is I've added that that as a command. So if I click on Toggle Layout here, I'm going to go to my uh, other layout, Skip's Layout. And then I have the toggle switch here, and I go back and forth. So you can switch back and forth between arrangements on your Surface Pro 3 if you make more than one arrangement. Let's say you do one for watercolor and one for um, something else. Now, you did mention that uh, you didn't realize what a hog painter is. Painter's not a hog. It is a very sophisticated program, and some of its brush engines, especially watercolor, are very uh, computer intensive. And, and, and they, they should be because of what they're doing for you. So yes, if you're on a middle range Surface Pro, it's going to seem slow to you. If you get one of the faster ones, it will be much better. But it's the same thing on a big computer, too. You know, you want to get the fastest computer that you can possibly afford. And, you know, watercolor will be somewhat slow, but most of the other brush brushes have been enhanced in Corel Painter 2015 and will work much faster for you. Okay, there's some tips for Surface Pro 3. I hope you find them useful. Um, and have fun with it. I, I thoroughly enjoy my Surface Pro 3. All right, take care. Bye-bye.